You're probably thinking, oh, photography without a camera? Probably just another video about using your phone. Well, no, far from it. Over the past century, cameras have taken on different colors, shapes, and forms. And nowadays, cameras all look the same, do the same, and make you beg for more hard drive space on the daily because the files are so freaking big. Some photographers have taken this as a sign to try something different. Instead of chasing the latest and newest cameras, they go back in time and use 50-year-old cameras, putting their trust into the very early days of small electronics that, at no surprise to anybody, disintegrate if you look at them the wrong way, turning your camera into nothing more than a brick of 70s plastic. These people are what we call analog hipsters, and I'm one of them. Here is a quick rule of thumb. The older the camera, the better of a hipster you are. But in my quest to become the biggest hipster of all time, I'm going to remove the camera entirely from my photography process, which is a very weird thing to do on a channel that mostly talks about cameras. <laughs> But I'm going to show you how I did it in the next couple of minutes, instead of spreading my road to success over a 25 season anime. The great thing about this method is that you don't even need to leave the house, and as a computer science student, that is where I thrive. Let's go through a quick example. Two months ago I released a small pack of Lightroom presets that aim to make your photos look like film. And as a product photo, I wanted to use something that looks like film packaging. I say product photo with air quotes because there really is no product to photograph. It's just a zip file you download. <laughs> so I thought about using some form of fake film packaging so it looks like it's an actual film stock. So my first idea was to maybe print the custom design for that box I had made in Photoshop and then maybe glue that print onto an existing film box. But that is super complicated because you can't just print it in A4 size, that's way too big. So you have to get the scale just right and it wouldn't look good even if I got the scale perfectly right because I just realized my printer only does black and white. So I needed an alternative. First step, buy a computer. Download the free software Blender. This is a 3D modeling software. Look, it's a cube. So 3D. I slap the design I made onto a box. Bada boom bada bing, Bob's your uncle, congrats, you're a product designer. Now we can easily make a scene around this to make it look a bit nicer, because any good product photographer will tell you the setting you display your product in is way more important than the product itself. Actually, I don't know if they would tell you that. I just made that up, but it sounds true. I added a table below so the box can sit on something. Okay, I lied, it's just a plane that I added a wood texture to. Then I realized this is pretty dark, I should add some lights. So with the power vested in me by God, I created light out of thin air by pressing shift and A. Then I moved the lights around until I remembered I know nothing about how to light products and continued with the next thing adding some more objects to the scene. I spent a week painstakingly modeling a plant, this set of encyclopedias and this beautiful Leica with detailed weathering and imperfections. Okay, I lied, I just downloaded them from the internet. I added the objects to the scene, using them as a backdrop to give some more visual interest, but I made sure they don't distract from the very interesting box. That's basically it, we can now position the camera object and start the actual photography part. Oh yeah, that's right, that's what this video was supposed to be about. You can set the resolution and aspect ratio, you can change the focal length and aperture. This part is very similar to standard photography. Find a good composition, use the right settings, show the subject, etc. Once you have a good composition, just hit F12 to render the scene, then realize your computer is way too slow and buy a new one. I'm just kidding, there are a few things we can do to make this faster. First, make sure if you have a dedicated graphics card to use that in the settings and turn down the amount of samples you use when rendering. That's basically how many calculations are done for all of the virtual photons you're blasting about. The results might turn out noisy when you turn down the samples, and that's why we need to enable denoising as well. The speed at which you are rendering is not that important if all you want is a few images, but using keyframes on the camera allows you to introduce movement and you can render animations to use in a product video or advertisement or whatever. And you need to render each frame of that animation individually, so when you're rendering a couple hundred frames, the speed really makes a difference. After a couple of hours of rendering, I threw the finished video files into a DaVinci Resolve timeline, added some color grading, halations, film grain and a ton of light leaks, because that's how you make any video look professional, right? 
Congrats, you now have a really cool video to showcase your product. And by the way, if you're interested in supporting whatever I'm doing here, then you can purchase these Lightroom presets for just $5 at the link in the description and make your digital photos look like film. Warning, this might expose some photographers that like to complain about the lighting or their gear to excuse their garbage photos. If you don't like the lighting, just download a different sky or add giant invisible fill lights right in the middle of the room. You don't have to scout or rent locations, you don't have to rent any expensive gear and you don't have to pay for employees that just drink coffee all day and make fun of you behind your back. Yeah, that's right, David. I heard you. And you can also quickly create things that you can't photograph in real life because they don't exist. For example, I made some abstract animations and I once redesigned the Mac Mini for fun because Apple wouldn't. If you're interested in learning Blender, I can recommend this series of Blender beginner tutorials by Blender Guru on YouTube. If you didn't learn Blender using the donut tutorial, you're not a real Blender artist. It's like a rite of passage. Seriously though, learning the basics of Blender is really not hard and it is so fun and so rewarding because you can literally create something out of absolutely nothing, which is the best way to fuel your god complex. The whole process is just 100% creativity. Okay, 80% creativity and... 20% waiting for your stuff to render. And of course, it's also a super helpful skill to have. So many ads and product photos or videos you're seeing online nowadays are just 3D renders. And there is a good reason why. It only took me three hours to design the packaging, make the scene in Blender, render out a couple of images, which I then edited in Lightroom and boom. Bob's not only your uncle, but also your client because you can offer a diverse portfolio of creative skills. I also have a diverse portfolio of other really fun videos, just like this one right here, that's at least twice as good as this one was. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.